Hello everyone, welcome to linuxin.com YouTube channel. Today we're going to talk about Bash on Windows. So the idea is that Linux on Windows is a reality. It can be done. But for that you have to take a couple of steps that are mandatory in order to install Ubuntu or any Linux machine on your operating system of Windows. So what we're going to do in order to install Linux Bash Shell on Windows, what you have to do is that first of all, you have to enable Windows subsystem for Linux feature. All right. So we also have that website article that we have done and also the video of that on our website. So what we're going to do is that we're going to put a link in the description to that article. So you can go ahead and you can also read that. So first of all, what you have to do is that you have to open up the PowerShell uh, of Windows and in there, you need to write a simple command to enable Linux basically. So click on the search menu of the Windows and search here PowerShell, okay? So once you search this PowerShell, you gotta open it. So one thing that you need to do is that you need to make sure that you open this PowerShell with administrator right, okay? So right now I have opened it up without administrator privileges. So what I'm going to do is that I'm going to write here PowerShell and I'm going to write here, click here, run as administrator, okay? So it's going to ask me, do you want to open it up as an administrator? And I would press yes. Yes, I do want to open it up as an administrator. And you can see that now I have this shell opened up. So now what I'm going to do is that I'm going to basically paste a command here, which says enable hyphen windows optional feature space hyphen online space hyphen feature name and then Microsoft Windows subsystem Linux. Okay, so once you have done that, now you're gonna hit enter. So once you hit enter, it's you can see that it's basically sort of running it. So once it runs it, it would basically enable the optional Windows feature of Linux. All right, so it would give you the ability to install Linux as a subsystem. So once you do that, once it is done, after that you could go to the Windows Store and from there you can install your Ubuntu operating system. That's what we're going to do. And after installation of the Ubuntu, you could basically run the command line in Windows Bash and you can pretty much perform every Bash command in that. Okay. So right now it is installing. So we will wait and this command, this enable hyphen windows option feature, so on and so forth. We're going to put this command in the description. So you need not to worry about it. And you could basically simply copy that command from the description. And then you can go ahead and you can install it on your PowerShell of on windows. Okay. So right now it is installing. So we'll wait. So right now you can see that, um, I already had it installed, so that's why it has not asked me to restart my system. But in your case, when you will be installing this command and running this command for the first time, for the very first time, it's going to ask you to restart your system, which is mandatory, okay? So what you need to do that after running this command, you have to restart your Windows system and then move ahead with other things, okay? So now, once you have done that, you have reached here, uh, what you have to do is that after, imagine that we have restarted this system, we have done it, and now what you need to do is that you need to go to your Windows Store, and from Windows Store, what you're going to do is that you're going to search here for Ubuntu, okay? So you can see that we have three versions of Ubuntu available, we have simple Ubuntu, we have Ubuntu 18.04 LTS, we have Ubuntu 20.04 LTS, right? So what we're going to do is that we're going to go ahead and install this Ubuntu 20.04, which is the latest version available. Okay. So we hit on the install button. So what it's going to do is, is that it is going to install it. Uh, it's going to download it first, excuse me, and then it's going to install it. So once the installation has been completed, we could go ahead and we could almost write down any bash command in there okay so right now if you can see that it's downloading and it's then it would install it so we'll wait
So right now you can see that Ubuntu 20.04 LTS has been successfully installed on my Windows operating system. It has been downloaded actually. So what I can do that I could go ahead and I could basically launch it. So once I launch it, you can see that there we have a CMD like window. We have a command line window and in here you can see that it's saying installing. This may take a few minutes. So what it's doing is that it is installing Ubuntu 20.04 LTS on my uh, Windows machine. So here uh, this Ubuntu 20.04 which is being installed on my Windows machine, it's going to be a subsystem of Windows. You can see that I'm not installing it on any virtual machine, right? So it's basically a subsystem of Windows and now it would take a while to install. So we'll wait. All right, so here you can see that now it is asking me for a username, of course. So what I'm gonna do is that I'm gonna enter here my username and let's say I'm gonna enter here my username as Linux Hint one So I hit enter and it is going to ask me for the password. So I put in my password, it is going to ask me again to confirm it. I again give my password and it basically confirms it and now it says that your password has been updated successfully and this is now basically my bash terminal all right so here I could perform different commands if I clear it you could see that it has been cleared now and now uh, if I want to do pwd then you could see a hit enter and you can see that this is my current home directory which is essentially slash home slash linux hint okay so i could perform other commands so if i ls here you can see that i don't have any of the uh, files here right now so if i do something like touch and then i create a file dot text hit enter the file has been created if i ls now you can see that i have no file dot text right so if I create a folder here, mkdir, dir1, if I ls here, you can see that I have a dir1 directory and I have file.txt file, okay? So in the similar way, I could perform many of the uh, commands. You could see that if I do ls hyphen al, I have different sort of, you know, things available, dot files and directory and a file on my, you know, current directory. And here you can see that we have the permissions like, you know, for the owner, we have read, write and execute able permissions for the, you know, the group, we have executable and read permissions. And for the public, we have executable permissions, right? So in the similar way for the file.test, for the owner, we have read and write permissions. For the group, we have read and write permissions. And for public, we have read, read and write permissions, okay? So you don't want to be there. Um, I would recommend to change these uh, positions, like change these read and write sort of actions and activities for the public specifically. Um, you don't want to give every permission to public like executing and read uh, writing. Okay, you could give the reading permission, but not writing and executable permissions. All right. So this is how you basically install Bash on Windows. I hope you have liked this video, you have enjoyed it. Please rate, comment, and subscribe. And for written articles, you can always visit our website, linuxin.com. Thank you so much for watching.